everyone, I'm Keely and this is Voice of a Creative and today I'm going to talk to you all about my recent Lamazzi Fabrics blogger make and show you how to hack multiple patterns into one garment. There will also be a discount code at the end of the video for Art Gallery Fabrics from Lamazzi Fabrics so watch till the end of the video to find out the discount code. So I am part of the Lamazzi Fabrics blogger team and I really enjoy being part of blogger teams because it gives you a chance to work with different fabrics, also allows me to keep writing and, and making kind of innovative things and for this blogger make I wanted to make an autumn dress and Liana from Lamazi Fabrics very kindly offered me some art gallery cotton jersey to make this blogger project out of. Now I absolutely love art gallery fabrics, I've worked with their rayons and their cotton jerseys and I would say the quality is absolutely incredible. The only thing is, is they are more expensive but I think that is totally worth it, the quality is there and the things that I've made out of those fabrics definitely last over time. It's not like you're buying something that's going to fade really quickly, it is going to stand up to the test of time. So for this make I decided to combine three patterns. Now I was kind of inspired by uh, 70s and 60s, kind of slightly flare mini dresses. And so I wanted to use three different patterns to come up with a dress. The patterns that I selected were the iris pleated top pattern from Forget Me Not Patterns. Now, you know if you've watched some of my recent videos, I absolutely love this pattern. It's a perfect fit t-shirt for me and it comes with these really cute puff sleeves and it also has a three quarter sleeve option. And I wanted to be able to make a dress which had those sleeves but was a dress because obviously this is just a top pattern. I also wanted the neckline to be a little bit lower so I selected the Agnes top pattern from Tilly and the Buttons because that has a really nice kind of lower neckline and then I could use the neckband from that and to make the dress part of the pattern I used the Freya sweater and dress pattern from Tilly and the Buttons stretch book. So three patterns that I wanted to combine into one to make a really lovely dress. So I'm going to show you how I did that, how I combined the three patterns into one so then you can try some pattern hacking of your own. It's always a really lovely skill to have and I know people kind of shy away from it a little bit but it's something that I've kind of always taken risks with and I actually really enjoy doing that kind of thing. I find it quite challenging which is a nice thing when you're working on kind of simpler jersey makes to hack different patterns together. So firstly I want to show you the fabric. So this is an art gallery cotton jersey that I used. It's absolutely beautiful. I love the blue background, that's my colours and then it's got the pale pink, grey and lighter blue with the leaves and then I just love the touch of the orange and the pink with the berries. I think that's a really cute addition, it just creates a contrast within the fabric. And I absolutely love the Art Gallery Fabrics designs anyway. There's very few that I would say no to, but this one's absolutely beautiful. And I feel that it's going to be a great one to wear through autumn, but also to wear hopefully for Christmas as well. I'm hoping this will be like my Christmas dress because I think it's really comfortable to wear kind of around the house for Christmas, but at the same time just special enough to give that a bit of a Christmas vibe. So I do have some fabric left after my hack here. And I think this is going to be enough to make part of a t-shirt so I'm going to work on a kind of patchwork t-shirt type thing to make from the remainder because there is no way that I want this fabric to go to waste. This cotton jersey is a medium weight I would say, it's really nice and soft. I love the design of it as well and it has got 60% stretch both ways which makes any garment you make out of it really comfortable. Now I've made t-shirts and dresses out of art gallery cotton jerseys and both have worked out really well and have been really successful. So all pattern hacks for me start out with an idea in my head and what I try to do is put that down onto paper using a sketch. So I did draw out a sketch using the My Body model Crocus that I bought when it first came out as a beta version and I love to use that because it's the right shape for my body because it's based on my body measurements and it helps me to see how something's going to look kind of on me in line form. 
So I copied from the line drawings from the different patterns to come up with my sketch. So you can see I've got the lower neckline, the three quarter sleeves, and then the slightly flared kind of shorter skirt for the dress. So once I'd put that together, I had to think about actually making the pattern. And then after I made the pattern, I made a test version in this cotton jersey that I got from Butterfly Fabrics and then went on to make this, which is my final version. And that is something to bear in mind. If you are hacking a pattern or hacking multiple patterns together, you might have to make a test version. I made this out of slightly cheaper fabric. If you've chosen patterns that you've made multiple times and you're making slight hacks to them, you could just go ahead in more expensive fabric, but I don't always like to take that risk and I didn't want to cut into this beautiful fabric without making a test version first. So I did make my test version. So let me show you the dresses first and then I will show you how I created the pattern. So first of all, beautiful fabric. I feel like it fits me really nicely. And this is the full length of the dress. So it comes just above my knee and that is just the standard Freya dress pattern. I don't make any alterations to it. It has a 1.5 centimetre hem on it. So I really love the slight flare of the skirt. So it bounces off my hips, which I really like. And I do like the tighter fitting bodice. You can see the lower neckline, so it comes out a little bit further on my shoulders. But I actually really like this, it makes my chest feel really nice and open. But it's still quite modest, I'm not showing any of my cleavage or anything like that. And for this version I went for the three quarter sleeve of the iris pleated top pattern. I really love this sleeve detail, I think it's really cute. So you've just got the pleat going this way and this way with the little cuff. And it just gives that a little bit of shape to the three quarter sleeves. And all together, I'm really pleased with this make. And I'll just show it from the back as well. Now, I would say one thing in terms of my body shape, I do have a little bit of extra fabric here, but that is inevitable with this kind of pattern. I have a quite a big difference between my waist and my hips here. So the largest part of me, which is why that's happening. But if I want to wear this style of dress, I have to make some sacrifices. But I think other than that, it fits me really nicely everywhere. So this was the test version that I made. Let's move it a little bit closer. So this one I made with the shorter sleeve that comes with the iris top pattern. So you can see the pleats here, which I think is also really cute. And I was a bit dubious on this one about doing the neckband and the cuff in the same fabric because I didn't want to have like half fishes um, going everywhere. So I selected some of this cotton jersey in this beautiful cranberry colour which is from Lamazi Fabrics and I just did the neckband and the cuff bands in that and I think it adds a really lovely contrast actually to the dress and it goes perfectly with my snag cranberry tights so I think it just looks really cute as an outfit altogether so this was my test version now this one initially I had to take it in a little bit at the sides so when I tried it on I was getting lines coming down here and that just meant that I needed to take it in a little bit more on the side so once I'd made the pattern and made this dress I just stitched it together with a straight stitch I didn't go straight on the overlocker and then I made adjustments to it just at the side. So I just took it in a little bit to the sides, down to my waist, and then I let it out a little bit on my hips, okay? So that's the adjustment that I made for the test version. And I made it on the test version and then I altered the pattern to make it on this version. So in terms of size, for the iris pleated top, I make a size 38. That goes best with my bust and waist and hip measurements. And for Tilly and the Buttons patterns, I often make a size five, but I do sometimes have to grade out to a six at the hip according to the pattern, which I think essentially is what I had to end up doing with this. So when I initially traced the Freya pattern, I traced the size five and I, is fine on the t-shirt version, but be because it doesn't hit the widest part of me, but on the dress version, I do need to grade out just to a size six on the like hip and like bum and leg area. So like my lower half, because that is my widest part there. So I'm now going to insert the video footage 
of me making three patterns become one so you can see how I did that and hopefully it will give you an opportunity to do some pattern hacking of your own and if you do please make sure you tag me in your makes on Instagram because I'd really like to see pattern hacks where you're combining multiple patterns into one. So things that you will need are a pencil, some tracing paper of some sort, this is from Pattern Trace, I've got my pattern weights and I've got the different patterns that I'm using ready to put all of these together. Now the first thing is thinking about seam allowance. So the Tilly and the Buttons patterns have 1.5 centimetre seam allowance or 5 eighths of an inch and the Iris Pleated Tee actually has 6 millimetres so there is a difference there. So what I need to remember to do is I need to make the seam allowances the same. So that means I'm going to be adding a centimetre onto the iris pleated tee seam allowance in the areas that that applies to, to make sure that I can then sew the whole thing with, a, with the same seam allowance. Now with this, I actually sewed the whole thing with a centimetre seam allowance rather than 1.5 because both the Freya dress and the iris tee are quite fitted and I wanted that little bit of extra movement but that's your choice it's just easier to sew things together if they all have the same seam allowance. So I'm going to get the relevant pattern pieces out and then I will show you how to put it together. So the first pieces that I'm looking at are the front of the dress. So I've got the Freya dress pattern, I've got the forget-me-not iris tee front bodice and then I've got the Agnes front bodice as well. Now the important thing to remember is, is the sleeves that I'm interested in most for the iris tee pattern. So I need to make sure that the arm side here stays as it is. So that's the one I'm tracing for that. For the neckline I'll trace this first of all, but then I'll trace the Agnes and then obviously for the dress part I'm doing the Freya. So that's how I'm kind of combining everything together. So first of all I just want to layer the patterns up. Now I'm going to focus just on the Freya dress pattern and the iris tee first of all. With this you need to think of a point that matches. Now because these are both placed on the fold I always think that that's a really good place to match so you can put both of the bits that you place on the fold together and then I often like to match the waist notch. Now I know with both the iris tee from Forget Me Not Patterns and Tilly and the Buttons, they fit me at the waist perfectly. So I know that the bodice block that they use is probably of similar kind of scale. I know that Iris T is drafted for someone who's five foot six and Tilly and the Buttons, I think it's five foot five. So there's only an inch difference there. So it's likely that the waist measurements will be about the same for that. So I'm gonna match the notches at the waist and I'm going to match on the fold. So you can see already they're quite similar. So I'm just going to put some pattern weights on to just hold those together. I suppose you could tape it if you wanted to, but I'm just gonna do that for now. So there we've basically got the pattern piece. Obviously, what you don't wanna to have to do is every time you make this hack, have to layer up all the pattern pieces. So I'm actually going to just show you how to trace it and then how to do the neckline. And then it will be exactly the same with the back piece. So you can go ahead and do that. So I've got my roll of tracing paper here, which has nearly run out. I'm gonna to have to order some more of this. Hopefully I've got enough. I may not have enough. Oh. Okay, I really don't have enough tracing paper, but I'm going to show you how to trace the top half as that's the most important part. And I will make an order today to order some more of this. Um, so just bear in mind, you need it to cover the whole of the pattern piece right down to the skirt. I'm just going to trace the, the top half. I have already uh, traced off mine. So these are my actual pattern pieces. So I'm just doing this to kind of show you, but I will reuse the tracing paper. So don't worry too much about that. So make sure it's covering the whole of the area that you are trying to trace first of all and I've just laid it on top but what I'm going to do is just hold it with my hand and then place the pattern weight on top of it. So I'm moving them from inside so it can lie nice and flat. So there we go, we've layered the tracing paper on top first of all. Now 
The first line I'm going to trace is the fold line and I'm just going to use a pencil and a ruler to do that. So I'm just going to lie the ruler along that edge and you will want to go all the way down to the bottom of the dress. So that's the first thing. Now you will also want to do the bottom edge. Obviously I can't because the bottom is down here. I will do the, bot the bottom edge next. So you just literally trace round what you see. You can use the ruler, but otherwise just draw freehand. Right, so now we're coming to the, the top part and the side part. So I'm gonna mark where the waist notch is. And then what we're trying to do is we are tracing the forget-me-not patterns for the bodice down to the waist. And then we're going to merge the patterns together and trace onto the Freya pattern, which is just here. You can't see it as well because it's made out of um, tracing paper as well. So I'm just using a sketched line with my hand. Now, please don't be nervous about doing this. You know, I'm an art teacher, so my pencil control is good, but it's definitely something that you can develop over time. So I've traced this line from here to here, and then I'm going to trace this line here as well. And then onto the Freya dress pattern. So you can see that this is the part here where we the forget-me-not iris ends and the Freya dress begins and I would just trace all the way down to the rest of the skirt and then the arm side as well. Now remember at this point you still haven't matched the seam allowances and the shoulders might end up being a little bit tight if you just go ahead and sew it like this. So I'm just doing the shoulder seam up here and then I'll mark where the neckline is as well. Now, this is a slightly higher neckline, but it will just help me when I'm positioning the Agnes T. I'm also going to mark the notch for the arm. So make sure you're marking your notches. And I will just draw a quick arrow to say to place on the fold in case I forget. You would also need to write what this is. So I wrote on mine, Freya Iris Agnes hack. <laughs> And then I've put what seam allowances are required as well, just in case I forget the next time. Our next part is we need to add seam allowance on to this. So I'm just gonna use my ruler. Now we need to add seam allowance to this part down to the waist, and then we'll just blend it together because that'll give you that little bit of uh, movement then. So I'm just placing the centimeter part of the ruler on the edge of the pattern, and then I'm just marking a centimetre and then I'll join those lines together so I'm just doing several marks and this will make it so that the whole seam allowance is 1.5 all together and just do it really carefully around the curve because that's the important part for the sleeves to match together So now where these dashed lines are, you can join the lines together and then just blend it in with the waist here because that'll make the seam allowance for the whole thing so far 1.5. So I'm just using sketched lines again with my pencil and then I'm just blending in just after the waist here. Okay, so there we have it. So we've got the outline edge going just here and now we're going to move on so we can add the neckline so I've got the pattern piece of the Agnes front bodice here and I'm just going to add it to the layer I'm going to do this slightly differently I'm adding this on top this time so again matching waist seams and front folds now, if you notice, this is coming up a little bit higher, so the waist on this top is probably a little bit different. So what I'm gonna do is just move it down slightly, making sure I'm matching that middle fold, but I'm gonna actually line it up with where my shoulder seam is for this one, because that's the measurement I want to use. And I'm just gonna place my pattern weights back on. Now, the only bit we're using is this bit here. So I'm just gonna trace round it, so I'm using it as a guide. And there we go, there's the neckline drawn in. So I've matched the pattern on the fold, 
I've matched the shoulder seams with this one because I added that seam allowance on so it's got the same seam allowance and then I've done it so you can see already that this is a lot wider neckline and a little bit lower as well so I've just traced that in like that. So now I can remove the pattern weights and my different pattern pieces and then I can cut out my pattern piece. So I'm just going to cut it out with paper scissors. So it does get a little bit tricky so you need to remember what line you need to cut so you can see this top line is from the original iris tee so I need to cut the second line down for the Agnes tee and then my shoulder seam and then remember you've got this is the seam allowance so you want to do it on the furthest out line So here is the one I actually used for the blog post. So you've got the seam allowance added and the rest of it added. Now the adjustment that I did make eventually, I did have to trim off the extra seam allowance that I added on here, but you're better to find that out later and make an adjustment to make it smaller because it is easier to make things smaller rather than make them bigger after you've already made them. So I've got that as my front pattern piece already. And then the back pattern piece, you just make it in exactly the same way. So layering up the pieces as I did for the front. The one difference is, is what you need to do is when you come to doing this part here, where the, like the side seam, where the two are going to match up, you need to just lay your other pattern piece, your front piece on top to just check that they match up because if they don't, obviously you're gonna have a bit of a problem. So you just need to check they match up and you also need to check that they match up at the shoulder seam. So just do a check at the shoulder seam. Now they should because you're tracing from the same pattern, but the back, yeah, it's just exactly the same process as the front to just create that. So those are those two pattern pieces. The last thing I needed to do was make an adjustment for the sleeve. Now you wouldn't normally need to do this on the iris top pattern, but obviously I've added seam allowance to this by a centimeter. So when I'm cutting out the sleeve, I have to add a centimeter as well. So I would add a centimeter here all the way around the where the armhole is and at the sides here so I would add a centimeter to both of those now I didn't actually trace out a new pattern piece for this I just did it by eye when I was doing it but if you feel more comfortable you, you may want to trace the pattern piece and add your seam allowance extra here so a centimeter on because then that makes the whole garment 1.5 1.6 centimeter seam allowance and it makes it a lot easier when you're actually sewing so make sure you mark your notches make sure you match all the seam allowance and make sure your pattern pieces fit neatly together now in terms of the neckband for this obviously i've traced the agnes t neckband so the piece that you will need for um, the neckband is just to use the Agnes neckband. It becomes quite easy to do, but obviously there's a lot to remember. You may want to make a note of what you did, write yourself a mini set of instructions if that's easier, but it just pulls everything together. So Lamazi Fabrics has really kindly offered a discount code for people who view this video to use in their store this weekend so you can use it as of now and it finishes uh, midnight sunday that's uk time so today and tomorrow that discount is for 15 percent off any art gallery fabrics on their website and that includes cotton jersey the rayons and the cotton so any art gallery fabrics you can actually go on their website and narrow down by art gallery fabrics by brand this code is good for 15% off which I think is really generous and is a great opportunity to get some beautiful quality fabrics for you as well. So that code is Keely AGF and I will pop it on the bottom of the screen so you can see and I will put it in the information below as well. So it's Keely AGF and that's for 15% off which finishes midnight on Sunday. So hopefully you really enjoyed the video and seeing how I put multiple patterns together. I am planning a few more tutorials to do with Jersey about hacking necklines and things like that 
just because it's been requested and also I'd really love to show people how to do it because it's something that's so easy to do and hopefully that will be coming up really shortly. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked this video, please press the thumbs up and subscribe if you want to hear more from me. Goodbye. Thank you.